Hi everybody, Vanquished Angel here, and today's topic is about religion and evolution. So on another video that I had, and I do a lot of atheist type videos, is someone posted about religion possibly being part of evolution. And this really intrigued me. It like because it's a thought that I've had before, what if religion is actually a process of evolution? What if religion is needed or was needed at some point in time to reach the stages that we're at? Or maybe it filled a need that we we needed. So religion actually might be a part of evolution in the human psyche or human development. And so I have done a lot of research on this. I've Religious research has been a focus of mine for many, many years off and on, and I get quite obsessive about it. I, I really delve deeply into it. I've studied the works on the Gospel of Judas. Um, lately, I've been looking into the Sinai manuscripts and stuff like that. So religion has taken up quite a bit of my time and I do look up at other religions as well. I studied Islam for a long time. I am preoccupied with religion for many reasons. Um, so so today's topic uh, is really just really piqued my interest and I looked into a lot of things to have to do with it and uh, did a lot of research and some of this did result from the links that that person provided. Now what's really interesting is I actually think that that person was trying to convert me to Christianity or make me look at things a little bit differently by showing that the power of prayer um, helps sick people and that uh, the power of prayer together can strengthen the bond between couples. People that go to church regularly live longer. And although I have no doubt of these studies having some validity, the question as to why is something that I would ask. Correlation does not equal causation. So therefore, just because someone goes to church does not mean that going to church makes you live longer. It just means that perhaps something they're doing in the process or whatever is making them live longer. Correlation is not causation. Going back to this, is religion a product of evolution? I actually kind of think so. I think there's many reasons for it. In the process of evolution, you, you have to look of where did possibly religion start to develop. There is evidence that religion actually may have started to develop as far back as Neanderthals. In, in the short story, in my theory, a higher level being may actually find a functional use for religion in everyday life that fits a lot of things that a person of higher uh, intelligence would need or a being of higher intelligence would need. So to address this and, and how it affects health, which if religion is going to be a product of evolution, therefore it must have uh, some usefulness or some sort of um, um, tool or it fulfills a need. But the question is as to why. What does religion do that supports a higher level being? Well, first off, um, one of the studies showed that uh, people with uh, terminal illnesses can show a benefit when they're strong in their faith. Well, so do people given a, a sugar pill. This is called the placebo effect because they think that it is doing something. Their own body starts to heal itself. They feel better and therefore it's positive reinforcement. Uh, placebo can have a great effect in healing the body or pretty much a lot of other things. Similar to the placebo pill that you think is going to heal you, churches or a lot of religious people will put this as a spin of, you see this is God, the effect of believing in God, you should believe in God, God heals you, when in all actuality it could very likely be the placebo effect. Another positive thing is that could affect the longevity of life or health from religion is community. Because you go to church and you interact with a lot of people, you develop friendships and bonds. You're in an area of acceptance. This sort of goes with my pack mentality of, of evolution in humans. I believe humans evolved as pack animals. Africa had a lot of large predators and, and a lot of dangers and, and things that humans had to watch out for. It benefited humans to bond together into tribes, uh, not just for protection, 
but uh, also for providing food, also raising and protecting children. Therefore, community is at the core of human survival, and, and we need it. We need that interaction because we depended on it physically, we're drawn to it mentally. We have a mental connection to this. And therefore, developing strong community bonds um, would have benefited us greatly in many ways, not just physical. Like if we fall on hard times, we can oftentimes go to the church and ask our peers at the church for help or aid, and they will oftentimes come through for those of the same community. They tend to do so for less for those that are not involved with their church, however. Another benefit to um, these religious organizations is oftentimes they assign duties. This is teamwork. So like a light example of that is uh, what's expected of a wife and a husband. You know, the wife nurtures the children, the husband goes out and provides food or, or is the material gatherer to make the, the family work. And then not only that, but it also helps the larger community by also delegating who does what and for what. So people didn't really have to fight over this or argue over this. They just sort of, it sort of was a sign. Um, also being of religion helps with loneliness, not just because you're getting together in communities and you're meeting together and you're being introduced to people, but also because you always have this friend to talk to that you believe is there, which is God or Jesus or Allah or, or whomever, Krishna or, or whatever. You have this ally that's listening to you, that's hearing your concerns, that knows your plight. It also helps to deal with loss. If a family member dies, you believe you may believe that you're going to go see them again someday. So they're not really gone. It's just temporary. So it helps deal with the heartache of loss as well. Um, it also gives you direction and purpose. Like the Bible lays out, or, or many religious books actually lay out what your duties are or what your goals are for you. This gives you a sense of direction and purpose. But it also... Uh, gives you something to do and a sense of direction for the community. So it keeps you somewhat uh, moving forward towards that end, which again benefits the tribe. And then it gives you a, sel a sense of importance. You are important to God. You are important to your little community there, your, your church goers, which gives you a sense of importance and value. So all of this, and, and I just described all the positive aspects, or many of the positive aspects of, of being involved in religion and the positive aspects it has on a higher level being. But I believe a sense of morality is related to pack mentality, for the most part. Like, um, for instance, wolves tend to let the babies eat the kill first. Then the alphas, who are the strongest of the tribe, and then the others, so on and so forth. The, net, uh, the morality is feeding the babies first uh, on a very low level. It also shows self-sacrifice. This, I believe, is pivotal to human survival. Now, what does religion have to do with this? Well, to a higher level being... It, it's just like a one-stop shop for all of these different things that guides a higher level being into what they're doing and their sense of purpose for life. You know, if you're thinking about tribal times and a person off on their own or traveling, they need someone to talk to, they can talk to God. You know, this, this sort of solved all these things that a higher level being of pack mentality would need. Therefore, religion becomes important to the survival of not just the individual but the community as well. Now there are negative sides to religion as well. Uh, for instance, if someone gets a terminal disease or something like cancer, they oftentimes feel like God is punishing them. Um, this actually can worsen their condition. Um, and then, you know, another part is questioning God when bad things happen. Uh, sexual assaults or this, a lot of people start to question God and question their belief. And because, you know, the belief in God provided all these answers, a, like sense of direction, 
and everything, their whole sense of purpose can oftentimes get thrown off because, well, all their answers were provided from this one thing, and now this one thing allowed them to be raped. Another one is, um, instead of finding a solution to a problem, they oftentimes just blame God. So for instance, in a community, when a disease spreads, the germs pass, and now we know this. But we don't necessarily know this because of religion. Religion would have said, God struck you with this disease because you did something and you deserved it and that's that. While it may make the person either feel bad or good or could have actually strengthened the tribe in some ways, it can also weaken the tribe. So for instance, maybe they ate undercooked meat and that was your punishment from God for eating undercooked meat or unclean meat, if you will. Um, they may have associated that and fire purifies therefore cook your meat and of course they would have been healthier but at the same time let's say it was a cold they might have just blamed it on um, swimming in a lake or something they're blaming it on something else and they're not actually dealing with the problem they're not finding uh, medicines to help they could have blamed it on doubt of God which everybody has even if you're super religious and they're not out solving the problem they're just saying get your faith stronger in God and, and this might not happen. Um, in a lot of cases too, religion forbids treatments. In, in some cases, so people won't seek treatment or they'll seek a faith healer instead. So let's say it's like a bronchitis, they'll go to a faith healer instead of going to the doctor and getting an antibiotic. And you know, it may have worked in the past and they got over it, their body's immunity help them through it but this one time it might not and they, and they might die forbidding you from getting immunizations or forbidding women from using birth control or other such things and this can cause a lot of problems other areas that religion causes a lot of problems is ostracizing certain people so for instance um, you see this in some religions or proceeds where it ostracizes women that don't necessarily um, do something the way they should and the woman ends up getting stoned or ostracized or thrown out like maybe her head covering fell off in a public place and now she's gonna get stoned or ostracizing gay people and kicking them out or someone who caught a cold because you believe it's God's wrath and lots of other things. And a person brought up to me that also uh, atheists and that suffer from more depression and suicidal tendencies and other things than people that are in a religious community do. And I just kind of wanted to point out too that that could be because of the rejection from the religious community or from the community as a whole. Because they don't have that support system that might otherwise be there, or that could be there without religion, but because they're not part of that group, they don't get the same support, and, and they're oftentimes lonely, ostracized because of their you know, beliefs or lack thereof belief. This oftentimes can cause that depression. So if you do a study on atheists to see if they are more depressed or what their issues might be, you're going to run into a side effect caused by religion itself that is not necessarily something relatable to being an atheist, but more or less caused as a way of being treated because you're not a theist. A lot of the uh, effects or health effects of being an atheist that they do attribute to being atheist are actually might directly be the result of how an atheist is actually treated within family the fact that they tend to you know get ostracized and and other such things religion also causes problems 
on, on a global scale. Um, their religion is better than this religion, so they have to kill this religion, and, and this one believes they're infidels, and this one thinks they're insignificant, and, and steal their resources, or, or whatever else, like Catholics and Protestants have been killing each other for centuries, and, and you know, you've got the, the Battle of Israel, they say it's their native land, but there are other people that live there, and blah, 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 and they don't want to share their lands, so, and God gave them that land, and blah, 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 and, and whatever else. They, they find religious reasons to fight over things, and wars are caused because of it. So it has a negative side as well. So I think, in my theory, religion, it gives them direction, sense of purpose, and, and focus, and, and sense of importance, and a way to be productive. You know, and, and also it provided a lot of structure for tribal peoples and, and banding together and it gave them something to bond over. Rituals and things cause bonding with humans and so we, we do lots of different types of rituals. A wedding is a ritual where you invest a lot of your resources, have people come witness it and then you go through this whole procedure. And, and this procedure is a mutual bond between the husband and wife that they do, which strengthens their bond. Now, do I think that it matters what type of procedure you do? No, I don't. I think as long as you are making that investment, and it, it strengthens the bond between you guys and between your families. There are many different types of wedding procedures that were done in different cultures over centuries. But they kind of all serve the same function. And I think that because religion serves so many functions for a higher level being, it was kind of a shoo-in. It was kind of um, something that they didn't necessarily have to do, but given a higher level being a human's imagination, needing to find answers and interpret the world around them Religion just sort of lent itself. It, it sort of came in and, and did this and, and provided direction and was a rule base for this to happen. So I think that it is a part of evolution, but it's not necessarily a required part of evolution. I don't believe religion was necessarily required for things like opposable thumbs helped build a lot of tools so therefore opposable thumbs was sort of a requirement to grasp things and, and build tools I don't necessarily think religion is like that but I do think religion does feed it I think religion feeds our imagination and as we picture these beautiful stories that we read in these books that we've made and and I think that um, it has fostered a lot of development in humans, but I think it can be equally as destructive. I think to a certain point we're kind of outgrowing it now. Like, we don't... Before we needed this magical, mystical being in the sky, and, and we needed to believe that something was there, because all we saw around us was only our immediate world. I think nowadays that we know that there's more, and that there is science, and that there is all these wonderful things. We don't necessarily need religion to guide us anymore. I think our natural curiosity towards things and, and building things and making things and, and moving out and branching out is enough. I, for one, find it completely awestruck that all of this developed from evolution. I, I think it's amazing. I think that's interesting. And we still do have a sense of direction. Obviously, right, life to have evolved would have to have a reason to evolve. Something to evolve surviving against. And this would be our direction. We are constantly evolving to surviving our next environments. So we evolved to survive in Africa with big predators. We're, then we're going to evolve to survive globally. And some people are a little bit more darker to survive in the sun. Some people are whiter to survive in areas of low sun. 
well, I think our next frontier is going to be space, and humans are going to have to evolve to live in space. And I think re uh, religion played a part in getting us to where we are today. But I also think religion is somewhat blocking us from moving on. We don't pursue a lot of avenues or cures for diseases because religion, in many ways. And now we have science, but a lot of it is staved off or stifled because of religion and, and its huge impact in our world. If you look up um, studying penguins and the mating processes of penguins, you're going to be horrified. You're going to be horrified because it was discovered a long time ago that penguins gang rape. Uh, penguins practice necrophilia. Uh, penguins are, um, they practice same-sex gang rape as well. And these studies were not released when they were originally done because it was thought that, it, well, it didn't support the societal norms at the time, you know, and it didn't, it didn't fit. So this study was buried and lost up until recent times. Because of religion at the time and affecting the way we interpreted things, studies like that weren't released. So I don't necessarily think that religion per se was required as, as a step of evolution for us. I think it was sort of happenstance. It happened to fit combined with our imagination and kind of became a product of our evolution that way and 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 did aid us it was sort of the crutch we used to help us it helps greatly but isn't necessarily a requirement of our evolution I don't know if that made any sense um, I will be posting links to a lot of the research that I did do uh, let me know what you think in the comments below um, I will be posting videos on other research topics that I've been on and what my theories and opinions are. Um, and, you know, just tell me what you think. Alright, have a good day.